How's it going ladies and gents? In this video, we take a look at what's new in iOS 13 beta 2. But before that, check out this brief word from our sponsor. Repairing and upgrading your Apple products is easy with iFixit's all-in-one fix kits. iPhone fix kits have everything you need to replace a cracked screen or a dying battery. The kit includes a custom driver, steel bits, opening tools, and more. And Mac fix kits let you replace your MacBook Pro's battery, upgrade the RAM, or swap in an SSD. Both kits include all the parts and tools you need and are backed by an industry-leading warranty. Plus, each kit includes a free illustrated step-by-step -step repair guide to show you the way. Click the link in the description to get your all-in-one repair kit today. And special thanks to iFixit for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. In iOS 13 Beta 2, SMB server connectivity via the Files app is now functional. In the previous beta, you received an error when trying to connect, but now you can actually go in, put in your server address, put in your credentials and connect directly to your server. Now, in my case, I'm using a Synology NAS and I use this NAS to store all of my video archives. So now this allows me to go in and connect to that NAS and access all of my archived videos wirelessly on my local network. So this, as you might imagine, is extremely handy. Not only can I access all the files stored here on this NAS, but I can also store files here and move files from the NAS to my local storage on my iPad. I can even play back video, although in this case, this 4K video with this very high bit rate, it's gonna be pretty sluggish and choppy when played back over Wi-Fi. Now I could connect to ethernet if I wanted to, and it would be much better. Now another advancement that you'll notice in beta 2 is that APFS is now supported for external media. Previously, if you try to connect an APFS formatted drive, it just wouldn't recognize it. But now when you plug that in, the Files app immediately recognizes the drive and you can go about using it. So here's my drive and now I'm going to go to my local storage. Let's find something that we can just drag and drop over to the external drive. So we're going to drag this folder all the way over. So we'll drop that right onto the subscribe to 9 to 5 Mac external drive. And there it is. So APFS formatted drives work just great in beta 2. The other big feature that wasn't available in the previous beta that's now available in beta 2 is the high key mono portrait mode effect. So this creates a classic look with a monochromatic subject on a white background. Now another new feature is the ability to adjust portrait mode intensity. So you can use this slider to move the light closer to your subject to smooth skin or sharpen the eyes or decrease the intensity of the light by moving it away from your subject for a more subtle look. Now under the crop tab of the photos app editor, you'll notice that the reset button at the top sports a slightly different look. Now in beta 2, the announce messages with Siri section of your notifications preferences has an additional option. You can now toggle on or off the ability to send replies without a confirmation. So with this own, Siri will reply immediately without reading back the message to you to approve. In the wallpaper settings, you'll notice that the live wallpaper and parallax buttons are now active, whereas in the previous beta, they weren't active at all. In the notes app settings, you'll find a new preferred language panel. You can also sort checked items automatically to move checked items to the end of your list. And in beta 2, you'll also notice that the new note glyph has been updated. When tapping the settings button in the upper right hand corner of the notes app, there's now a cancel button to get out of the settings. You'll also notice some subtle changes to the names of the items in the list. And while in dark mode, you'll notice that the tool set is also dark in beta 2. Now in beta 2, you'll find a new show link previews toggle in Safari preferences. So when you have this disabled and you long press on a link, the preview that normally appears will be hidden. So on the left side, beta two with show link previews disabled and beta one on the right side. When sharing a web page, you'll find a new options button that allows you to choose between PDF, reader PDF, web archive, or automatic. You'll also notice dictation support in the bookmarks, reading list, and history search bars. You'll hear new tap back sounds in beta two. So there's the heart. Thumbs up, thumbs down, haha, -ha. exclamation point, and finally the question mark. And you'll also find four new Memoji stickers in beta 2. 
there's a subtle new haptic sound when using quick action shortcuts. And I find that the tap to select text functionality is just more reliable in beta 2. When using command tab, you'll find an updated home screen icon. Here's beta 2 and here's beta 1. You'll find new buttons and voicemail on beta 2. I've zoomed in a little bit so you don't see all my numbers. And you'll find a more pure black on the favorites tab of the phone app. In the reminders app, you'll now find drag handles when in edit mode to reorder your list. And you'll find an updated edit menu when editing each individual list. You also find updated glyphs when adding a new list item. And you can access list detail when swiping on a list name. In the clock app, there's a new wake up alarm glyph along with a new bedtime glyph. You'll find a larger play button in the voice memos app and a new HomePod splash screen in the home app pertaining to the upcoming ability of the HomePod to recognize multiple voices and respond to personal request commands from individual users. Now you will need a HomePod update before this will work and that update is not yet available. You also find some new tvOS centric features like the ability to add your profile to the Apple TV but you will need to be running the latest version of tvOS before you're able to do so. Now you'll also find the ability to access your subscriptions directly from iCloud settings in the settings app. And when deleting an app with a subscription on iOS 13 beta 2, you'll receive a warning telling you that you have an active subscription and it gives you a link to manage that subscription. So you don't end up paying for something that you're not using. And here's a really cool new feature in the shortcuts app. There's now a new set appearance action that allows you to set your appearance to dark or light mode. So basically you can use this to use Siri to invoke dark mode. Super easy to set up. I actually created a shortcut, enable dark mode. Done. And it switches to dark mode just like that. Super nice. In the Maps app, it gets a new splash screen detailing where you can find look around locations, San Francisco, Las Vegas, Honolulu, talks about favorites and collections and series suggestions. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a hands-on look at iOS 13 beta 2. What's your favorite new feature in beta 2? Let me know down below in the comment section and also stay tuned for a brief word from our sponsor. Special thanks to iFixit, creator of the iPhone Fix Kits and MacBook Pro Fix Kits for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. Head over to iFixit using the link in the description and get yours today.